It's Chris from Atlantic Outboard, and I'm going to do a digital walkthrough delivery of your brand new R247 Rabalo. Starting off, if you do trailer the boat, most likely you'll have the trailer lock engaged. What you're going to need to do is go in the boat, turn your battery on, and then you would be able to, on the other side in this exact spot, you'll be able to tilt the motor up. Once the motor's up at its highest point, you lower this trailer lock. It's this little silver latch here. It's got a spring on it. So once you lift that all the way up, then you could lower the motor all the way down into the water. Um, the, each Yamaha motor is going to have a flush port, which will be located on the other side after a day on the water in the salt. You could just hook up your, your freshwater hose to that and flush out the motor. Back of the boat, you have trim tabs are standard on this 24 model. The thing you're going to do on your new R247 Rivalo is turn on your battery supply. Under this lid, you're going to have your battery switch down in the corner. 12 o'clock position is in the off position. So to turn it on, turn it to both batteries, which be directly down into the 6 o'clock position. A lot of people ask, should I have it on battery 1 or battery 2? I always recommend turning on to both batteries, which is in the 6 o'clock position, so it's charging both batteries once the motor is running. After you turn on the battery supply, the first thing you're going to want to do is start the motor. Okay, so with this boat, your key lanyard goes here. That has to be in in order for the boat to start. Once that's in, you can turn your key, get the motor running, let the motor warm up while you move on to your next option. So your GPS display will be here. You can get that powered up. You could store the cover for your Yamaha gauge. You could throw it in your glove box. All your switches here, horn, bilge pump. Your bilge pump has a hardwired direct to the battery. So what that means is if this boat were to get any rainwater or soapy water when you're washing the boat into the bilge, even if the battery supply is off, if the water level raises up enough to trip the, the float switch, it will pump the water out even if you are not on the boat, even if the power is off. What this bilge switch does is say you pour a bucket of soapy water into the bilge, you can manually turn the pump on to pump that water out. Um, next is your nav and accessory light. You have a nav light forward and on the hard top. Um, you could just turn the mass light on if you're anchored, or if you turn your navigation light on, it'll turn the bow light on and the hard top. You have courtesy lights throughout the boat, so in the evenings, if you're washing the boat, you could turn on the light just to see so you don't trip on your shoelaces. You have map lights, would be overhead lights here. You have spreader lights in the hard top. They'll face back to illuminate the deck. You have, every boat will have an accessory switch. A lot of times that's a blank switch. If you, if you add more components to the boat down the road, uh, the technician may use that blank switch to tie in that electrical. Um, you have water pressure. So your water pressure will, as soon as you turn that on, it's gonna pressurize your fresh water system. The fresh water system is used for the shower in the back of the boat, and it's used to flush the toilet. So your toilet won't flush with water unless your fresh water switch is on, and that is labeled as water pressure. Live well and wash down, as soon as you sw switch that, it will supply pressure to your salt water system. So your live well will begin pumping salt water, or if your salt water wash down is needed to clean up fish scales, you could use the hose at that point also. Trim tabs, always keep those on. There's no real reason to shut that switch off. That'll give power to your trim tabs. Windless, as you hit that button, it will haul the anchor up or release it down. You also will have a set of controls up on the bow. And then again, we'll have a blank accessory switch here. Trim tab indicators are here. As you engage the trim tabs, they'll have illuminated uh, slots. They'll show how, many, um, how much level is engaged on those trim tabs. You typically want to keep them even unless you need to uh, um, even out the weight on the boat. A lot of times people will use the trim tabs if you have a heavier person on one side, the boat may be leaning favoring them. You would engage the opposite trim tab to level out the boat. Stereo with Bluetooth is easy to hook up. If you're having any trouble connecting your Bluetooth to your stereo, Simple tip is just go on YouTube and they will have a walkthrough. A lot of times it's very simple, um, but that's a backup plan if needed. I'll do a uh, quick walk through of the boat. 
in your head compartment, you'll have a light, freshwater sink, and that switch needs to be on. And then you have your toilet. In order to flush the toilet, again, you need to have that freshwater switch on also. So all you do is you hit the switch and it will flush, just like at home. You have storage underneath in each cabinet. And again, there's a light and you can lock it. Every boat owner should know where their through-haul valve is. This boat has a green ball valve handle located in the bilge. In an emergency situation, you would want to isolate that to limit the water coming into the boat. Every boat will have that that's used to service your live well. So if you ever have any water in the bilge, unexpected water, the first thing you do is close that ball valve and then it would help you determine where the water would be coming from. This boat is equipped with a fresh water holding tank. This black box is your waste holding tank. You have salt water wash down pumps. You have a Yamaha fuel filter, dual batteries. You have your battery charger over here is where your battery charger would plug in. You would just take a three prong extension cord, plug it into that, and you would be able to maintain your batteries at the dock or if the boat is stored in your yard. Your port side passenger seat has the ability to slide back and forth and spin. This black handle here, if you lift that up, that gives it the ability to spin all the way around, okay? Underneath, there's another handle. You pull that up and that will allow the seat to slide back and forth. You do have a bow and cockpit table in this boat. That would be stored behind the dash here. Table leg is there, table top is there. You also have a light in here. There's another stereo head unit. If you ever have to adjust, adjust the treble base or anything like that, there's more options to do so on there. Once you pull that table out, it's very simple. The base just goes in the socket in the floor and then the tabletop would go directly above that. You can also use that table up in the front of the boat. I'll walk you up front. Under each seat is storage. Um, if you're not using the cushions, they can be stored below deck or in the head. This boat will come with a sombrella cover to cover the whole bow area and there's also a cover to cover the cockpit area. These are the controls for your windlass we discussed earlier. You can control this windlass from the helm or up at the bow. Once you drop your windlass or once you drop your anchor, anchor with the windlass, you want to cleat it cleat the line to this cleat. You don't want all the force on your windlass itself. So once you drop the anchor to the bottom, it uh, comes tight, give out a little more slack and do a figure eight half hitch on that cleat to secure it. It's important for, if you're trailering your boat, you always wanna make sure your drain plug is in. That's extremely important. Most of the time, if you're trailering your boat, a lot of people take it out. I recommend always keeping your drain plug in so you don't forget it. On your R247 in the transom here, this cap is the waste pump out. Um, you would bring it into a fuel dock and they would have a waste pump service. You would unscrew this, they would take a big suction uh, hose, stick it there and it would pump the waste out. Um, if you do have a vacuum flush system, we recommend you push down the pedal so it would allow it to suck all the waste out. Most other systems um, will suck freely. Over here, under this cap, where you see waves labeled on the cap, that's where your fresh water fill would be. And then over here, you would be able to thread in a, a hose, a small coiled up hose. That's where your salt water wash down will be. Your fuel fill is over on the port side midship. It's a push button. You just compress the button and the lid would open up. That's where you'll fuel the boat.